white people, um, there is a serious conversation that y'all need to have amongst yourselves about these mass murders in the U.S. These conversations don't involve anybody else of any other race, creed, nationality, or planet other than y'all. But don't worry, I'm going to give you some talking points to help guide this discussion. Since about 3.45 this morning, tossing and turning, obviously, if anybody who's got a cell phone or a television has known, this has not been a great week for America as it relates to these mass murders. As I was scrolling through Instagram and Twitter and reading, jumping from article to article, I kept coming back to one reverberating theme. And it's that this is a conversation that needs to be had amongst white people, in particular, white men. Now listen, I know some of you out there are going to, you know, jump to the defense super quickly and be like, wait a minute, you know, there are other people of other colors and races that have committed mass murders. Yes, that, yes there has been. I'll give you that. But when I went down to Florida State University and got my degree in economics, those people taught me a hell of a lot about trending. They taught me a shitload about st statistical analysis. And they also taught me how to account for outliers. Disproportionately, the perpetrators in these crimes are white men. So that's where the bulk of the focus needs to go until we're able to fix this problem. White people, what's going on? And please miss me with the mental illness excuse. As a person of color in this country, I am scared, number one, and I am upset because you guys in these mass murder situations tend to be the only people who get all of this compassion and the mental illness defense. Let these shooters have been Mexican. Everybody would have been chanting, build that wall, send their ass back to their country. Let him, let them would have been Muslim. Y'all have been trying to bomb synagogues and march out all up and down the streets throwing hissy fists, trying to block the people's permits to build churches and pray. Let him be Billy who favors your son or your neighbor's son and all of a sudden it's all this compassion. You know, oh, he must have a troubled background. Oh, he has mental illness. Oh, he had a, a troubled upbringing. Why isn't mental illness, troubled upbringing and the same level of compassion extended to anybody else? Here's what's funny. When the terrorists did the 9-11 bombing, and this is an extreme example, but we analyzed that and it circulated in our media for years. I have never heard the words 9-11 and mental illness used in the same sentence. When we bring up these mass murders, a lot of uh, fragile white people love to point the finger at black people on some, I know you guys are talking, look at Chicago. What about Chicago? What about Chicago? What about it? Yes, Chicago does have a problem. And I'd be the first to admit that the problem in Chicago is a conversation that black people need to have amongst black people. But the question that I have as it relates to Chicago is why isn't Chicago and mental illness ever used in the same sentence? Why aren't, what, I, I mean, is it possible that these thugs that are shooting up everybody in Chicago mentally ill? If it's possible, and, and you know, not excusing poor behavior, but at least in their mind, they're rationalizing it by, you know, gang wars and gang turfs and, oh, you know, the, the yellow team did something to the blue team, at least I can semi wrap my head around that. I can't wrap my head around somebody driving 10 hours to shoot up the place. I can't wrap my head around somebody walking into Walmart and shooting up the place. I can't wrap my head around that. Now, when I was coming up, 
you know, Becca, I got a friend that's a school teacher and he posted on his Facebook page, my kids are coming back to school this week and now I've got to deal with the stress of all of their fears of, of these mass shootings and bulletproof backpacks and all that type of stuff. And I think back to my childhood when I was in school and we used to make jokes about people going postal because the only e examples that I kind of remember growing up in the 80s and 90s was the people that was going in the post office shooting up the place. But correct me if I was wrong, you know, that man and those people, they was going shooting up their supervisor and their co-workers that was messing with them. You know what I'm saying? Don't make it right, but I can begin to wrap my head around that. I can't wrap my head around people just walking up, going down to the garlic festival and shooting up people. Baby, if you is not safe at the farmer's market, where are you safe at? And I'm going to tell you something. I carry big city naivete. I am one of those people, and to this day, I'm still one of these people. I'm from Miami. That don't happen to us. I live in Atlanta. That don't happen to us. I frequent L.A. That don't happen in L.A. I go to New York. This don't happen in New York. This happened to people in Oklahoma, Indiana, Montana, Utah. This don't happen to people like Miami. And then when Stoneman Douglas happened, which was uh, just north of me, that hit home, but I still carried a willful naivete because I was like, okay, the trend is schools. I'm not in school. They shooting up the black church. I ain't, I don't, y'all know, I don't go to church. Okay, they shooting up the post office. I ain't been in one of those in almost 20 years. You know what I'm saying? Where else they shooting up? Most recently, they shot up the garlic festival. I don't even like garlic. But wait a minute, they shot up the Walmart? Yeah, bitch, I go to Walmart. They shot up the club district? I'm at the bar four nights a week. So now I'm worried. And I know when these mass murders first began, you know, people used to um, say things like, don't be scared to go out. That's what these people want. Be fearful to go out. Uh, you're allowing them to win. My friends and I over brunch today were having a conversation about now how we now have to put mechanisms in place to ensure that we don't get shot up. Like for me, I've already ruled out festivals. I've ruled out um, like Bourbon Street and, and, and South Beach situations, concerts. Um, you know, farmers markets, things like that. Now, you know, you can't even go to damn Walmart. Luckily for me, Walmart is 24 hours, so I guess I'm going to have to go at 4 o'clock in the morning. That should reduce my risk of being shot up. But you are safe nowhere. And as great as our country is, our biggest weakness is capitalism and greed. All right? Listen. I am all for people protecting their interests. I get it. It is counterintuitive and it goes against human nature to cancel out anything that you benefit from. That's why the dominant culture does very little to help change some of the disparities in this country because they positively benefit from them. You know what I'm saying? I get it. It's human nature. But goddamn, at what point is a revision and a review of gun laws no longer off the table? Like, NRA people, NRA people, like, I would give anything to be a fly on the wall of some of these NRA meetings, board meetings, I don't know, whatever the corporate structure is, governmental meetings, like what is going on here? American government, what is going on here? I don't understand why we can't do something. Now, I also saw a post that said, 
just because something is made illegal doesn't mean it's going to go away. And then they point it back to the prohibition era where, yes, you know, alcohol was illegal and it fueled basically, you know, the mob and racketeering and bootlegging and all that type of stuff. Yes, bad people will still find a way to get their hands on guns. Child, I believe we got so many uninventory guns in circulation, we'd be surprised to know what all is out there, but it is a start. And moreover, even if it does nothing, it's symbolic of the fact that this country cares about its people. And it's time we start putting the people over profit. NRA people, I'm not trying to shut y'all down. Middle of American people who think hunting is a rite of passage, I don't want to take y'all guns from y'all. All I want is people to not be able to get their hands on semi-automatic weapons. And I want it to be as hard as it is to get a damn home loan. I, it needs to be equally as hard to get a gun. It needs to be. This has got to stop. And I'm sorry I did not want to make this a whole, you know, Donald Trump and politicize this whole argument about these guns. But we've got to have this honest conversation. There is a very ugly underbelly of white America who is racist, entitled, insecure, and mad. And, uh, you, you know, mad for what? I do not know. And you cannot tell me that there is not a direct correlation in this uprising in hate crimes and this president being in office. Is it his fault directly? No. Did he put a gun to somebody's head and make them pull the trigger? Absolutely not. But he has validated these people's feelings, fears, and emotions. Okay? Donald Trump has never come out and said uh, Mexican people are the scum of the earth, but he might as well have said that with his actions and the rhetoric that he uses. For anybody out there, and, and, and this, is, this is what trips me up because I often get in heated or spirited discussions with a lot of white people at the bar as it relates to this president being racist. And a lot of my white people that I talk to at the bar, it is my thought that they are fearful of saying he's racist because somehow it also reflects on them and they don't want to be called racist. Listen, I am of the belief that you can be in support of Donald Trump and not be a racist. I think that there are some people out there, some uh, white people, some upper income people who are so out of touch with the common man that they care less about people and more about economics. You know what I'm saying? And so, yes, I think that those people are able to support Trump, be, you know, be the most staunch Republicans and not be racist. I still say shame on you when you choose your pocketbook over people. But you have to call a spade a spade. And if you're unwilling to designate the president as racist, then are you at least willing to admit that the conversation that he has as it relates to white people is softer and gentler than that that he has of people of other colors. Is that a fair start? And if you're unwilling to meet me, at least at that point, then yeah, you probably are racist and you're a fucking asshole as well. Had this person been Mexican, the conversation would be build that wall. See those horrible Mexicans. Those drug dealers, they're sending their prison people over here. He'd be, you know, he'd be inciting people to kick the Mexicans out. Had this, had these perpetrators been black, then it's, you know, this is what happens in these poor rodent infested neighborhoods in Chicago and they need to clean it up and what did Obama do for black people and black people need to get it together and yada, yada, yada. Had these people been Muslim, then it's, you know, we don't want these a mosque in our neighborhoods and I told you they're all terrorists and yada 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 but they're white men and the conversation is now so gentle Melania and I are prayers are with the family they're prayers we're praying always oh, mental illness 
Oh, what about his troubled background? Oh, you know, he was in foster care. And it just baffles me that none of these soft explanations are used for anybody else. White people love to bring up Chicago in this conversation. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, guns, guns, guns. What about Chicago? The black people shooting up Chicago. Okay, I'll be willing to give you Chicago. But Chicago is a conversation that needs to be had amongst black people. You're right, we do got a problem in Chicago that disproportionately affects black people. You know, and what I will say, and not that this makes it any better, not that it makes it any better, but at least Chicago is a controlled, confined situation and we shooting up each other. You know what I'm saying? Don't make it right. Y'all going up shooting people outside of y'all damn com community. You know, I hate what I'm about to say, but shoot up your own damn selves. You know what I'm saying? Shoot up your own damn selves. Stop going out and shooting up folks that ain't got nothing to do with whatever it is you feeling in your damn spirit, soul, and heart, okay? And why isn't mental illness ever used in the same sentence as Chicago? Does it not, does that not make you mentally ill to shoot up a block with 15, 20 people who look like you standing on the corner? Sounds kind of mentally ill to me. But the mental illness excuse is only used when it's Johnny or, 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 or you know, little David. Oh, not little David. It's time that this comes to an end. White folks, y'all need to have an honest conversation with yourselves. Um, what's another talking point I want to touch on really quickly? You know, I am of the belief that the war on gun control was really lost in this country when we made it acceptable to shoot up children. Okay? If you can do harm to women and children and no change has been made, it's a wrap. America, we are going to hell in a handbasket. Them children got shot up at Sandy Hook Elementary. Them kids got shot up at Stoneman Douglas. Them kids got shot up at Columbine. And that still was not enough to move for tougher legislation. And here's my thing. I'm all about trying everything. All right, all right, all right. The lobbyists brought us out. The lobbyists bought themselves time. When is the time going to run up? When is it that the people whose pockets are being lined by the NRA and some of these other lobbying forces, when are they going to be like, you know what? I can't even justify taking this money anymore. Like, I've got to do something or people going to be looking at me crazy. Like our congressional and legislative leaders or whatever other title, government people. I don't understand how y'all walk into session with your head held high knowing that you're advocates and proponents of things that could potentially, if removed, help mitigate some of this. And why aren't you guys' governmental counterparts holding y'all accountable. Like, why aren't y'all showing up to work at Maxine Waters and in there cussing y'all ass the fuck out? Forget parliamentary procedure and robber's rules of order. Like, baby, it's time to get out of order. Desperate times called the desperate measures. Like, why aren't people in the Congress and the House and wherever else the laws are made? I ain't the most, you know, politically astute when it comes to civics. I was sleeping in that class. Why aren't they making y'all so uncomfortable that you're scared to show up to work? Y'all are playing too nice. One thing that I did learn from this Donald Trump and I respect when used properly is that he is just not afraid to tell it like your T.I. is. When are people going to take the gloves off and stop playing nice and getting y'all ass about what the hell is going on in this country? And, you know, it just goes to show, here's the other thing that's really sad. With the white governing body, White folks, y'all ain't even loyal to y'all own damn selves. You see what I'm saying? Y'all are loyal to the dollar. Because in many of these instances, Sandy Hook, Columbine, Stoneman Douglas, this was other white folks being shot up. 
and the white governing body don't seem to give a damn about y'all's counterpart. I mean, shit, if you don't give a shit about folks that look like you, then who the hell do you give a shit about? I'm just curious to know this has got to come to an end. And with that being said, y'all, you know, that's my take on it. Lord, I hope that, you know, I mean, hell, can we have a 30-day ceasefire? And in my closing point, I've always said, I really wish the news, I almost wish these types of things didn't make the news, right? Because I feel like these things being so widespread in the media is what puts these ideas in people's heads. Much like I think these childhood suicides being covered so heavily in the media is what puts hanging in the minds of 10 year olds. As I get older, I am coming to learn that a lot of people's minds are very feeble and very impressionable, more so than I was willing to give allowance to. It's like these people's minds are sponges and absorb these bad, hateful, evil, Vibes, and I wish the media, I, sh I mean, this is one of those instances when I wish it was damn Korea and we were filtering what the hell we're able to see in the media because I feel like if, if this didn't get so much play, less people would think of it as an option to go shoot up the place. This is getting lengthy. I'm going to get off the line and get to some more happier stuff but y'all drop down in the comments and let me know how and what you feel about it and honestly and truthfully this was not to be a racial attack or an emotional ploy to play the one side or the other but i really want to hear from my white viewership or any white person that comes across this page what do you feel and how do you feel about white men disproportionately being the perpetrators in these mass shootings. Drop down in the comments, let me know what you think, and we'll talk later.